The reason I'm showing you this wine um, is because Alvaro got involved and then Pedro got involved. And they saw something here that wasn't just about a social aid project. And I think you can taste that in the wine. It, yes, it's pretty baked. It's pretty... The VA is probably slightly... Ooh. Um, it's not entirely stable, probably. But for me, what I love about this wine is the structure and the tannin. That tannin, it's a little bit... It's still quite young, the 2011. It's a little bit rustic and a little bit furry, but I think... It's really, really interesting. And I think that's coming from the structure, the acidity, the tannin. It's coming from a couple of different things. It's coming from the altitude. Yes, this is a warm place, but this is 2,500 metres. Next year, the end of this year, they're planting Pinot at 3,500 metres uh, in Talabre, which you can see on the right. Um, well, it's a bit difficult. This is from Toko now at 2,500 Talabre is even further east and just to the south and east of, of Tokonau. That's at 3,500 metres. Now, to my mind, those are going to be some of the highest vineyards in the world. I know people in Nepal quite often and, and other parts of the world have, have issues with that. But these are going to be Hess uh, with Colomés. I think his highest is about 3.1. Uh, these are going to be at 3.5. So we're talking high altitude. We're also talking limestone soils. And if you look, um, these were taken by someone who saw a piece that I wrote and sent them in saying I had a great time in this area. You look at those, what the houses are built out of in this area. They're built out of limestone <coughs> blocks. So you've got a lot of limestone in the soil as well. You get cool conditions, bright sun, limestone soils. Um, and there's some real potential here. Now, these guys, this is on the top left. I think this is a brilliant photo of what is basically a vineyard in a desert. And nothing else. That's Alvaro Peña, Peña looking at the vines. He looks to be slightly startled and quite worried, doesn't he? <laughs> he said, what the hell's going on here? Um, that's probably the total production in a year. Um, and these are the guys having a lecture from Alvaro, Alvaro top right, um, and, and actually bottling the wine. Now, this is highly technical, technological in innovation for the Atacama Desert. They used to, before, destem it all by hand, which took two weeks. And, of course, Alvaro said when he measured the acetic acid... It was just way beyond illegality. It was, and they used to sell it. They used to then bottle it and sell it in used Coke bottles in the local mining town for a couple of pesos a pot. Um, Alvaro and Pedro have worked with them to try, and, to try and make it a little bit cleaner. And I think this 2011 is a bit cleaner than the 2010 that I tried. But what I'm getting at here is there is a heritage here. In both of these wines, there's a heritage, a terroir reality, and huge potential for where Chile can go. I think in all of these six wines, we've pushed the limits of the compass points in Chile, south, north, east, and west. And I think this is a nice way to end. It's just something completely different that shows uh, a lot of potential of what can be done in, in Chile. Um, Pedro's plans, he's going to be helping the, the plantings at 3,500 metres, is to do a, what he describes as a, a Rastafari goblet system. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds interesting. Um, yeah. Um, it says on it, I think. It says um, number of plants, 400, uh, number of bottles, 160. So <laughs> this is quite a significant portion of their annual production they've sent over. So I'm hugely grateful. Let me just emphasize again, hugely grateful to the wineries uh, for sending these. Um, this is not a hugely commercial <laughs> product. <laughs> But I thought it'd be very interesting to try this. Like I say, this is an exclusive tasting. I'm not sure this has been tasted outside Chile. Um, it's, Pedro has been instrumental in getting this here. The guys from, from uh, this were very, very grateful that we were able to feature it in a tasting like this. Um, but I'm very grateful that they sent it because it's something that you wouldn't normally get to try. Um, I don't normally get to try. And it's just something very different. But I think, like I say, there are more plants going in here now. There will be more plants a bit higher altitude. So we may be seeing a bit more of Atacama and wine um, in the future. So just to round off, thank you very much again for coming. Um, I hope I've broadened your perspectives a little bit about what Chilean terroir is, where Chile is at the moment. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of the day. Um, and watch this space, I suppose, would be the best way to conclude. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.